Hi, and welcome back to this episode 36 of this totally over the top CNC modification retrofit conversion of a Sieg 7x12 mini lathe. Now before I can pull all this down and paint it, there are two more jobs I need to do here. One is lathes always have swarf coming out the back of the spindle hole. So I can't just have swarf dropping down onto the, the encoder and all the other stuff here. So I need to make an extension, drop it out overboard through the hole here. So it's the first thing I'm going to do. And then the second thing I need to do is I need to extend this uh, gear change lever. I'll probably just put a, a fork and yoke on it with a push rod. And then probably a hole here and just have it like pull it out for high gear, push it in for low gear. Now I'm going to need a tube slightly bigger than the OD of this pipe. Due to lockdown I'm not going to be able to go and buy a piece of pipe next week I'd say. So I think I'll just make this out of sheet metal. I'll use this as a mandrel, bend some sheet metal over it so that it clears the outside of those nuts. And I think I'll also give it a bit of a funnel shape so that the uh, swarf naturally comes back and drops out. At least that's what I hope is going to work. So here you can see the rough plan. There's going to be a tab here. This is going to be turned up into a half circle. Then there'll be a bit of a straight portion, like the, the funnel shape. Second half circle, second funnel shape. And then this gets riveted to that. At least that's the concept. Let's see if this will work. So far, so good. Now, open up that angle. So far that tr transition piece is looking quite nice. Question is, is how to clamp it for the last, for the last tapping. Might be best just to clamp it with G-clamps I think. Well, that's kind of how I wanted it. Just have to check and see if it's going to be long enough once I trim it up. When you watched last week's video, our number one fan, Nico, saw that I was using this IKEA kitchen drawer sort of protective rubbery plastic stuff and he freaked out because this of course is a machine tool and it needs some sort of a black ribbed rubber, uh, I don't want to get into it, I'm not sure why he's into black ribbed rubber but that's his thing. Yeah anyway, I, I need you all to, uh, to promise to keep quiet on this and don't let Nico know that I, I actually bought a whole roll of this. But I've already started lining the drawers of my of my toolboxes with this stuff. This probably is not going to fit now because I can't remember how I took it out. Now I'm still trying to work out how I'm going to attach this, whether it'll be a 
some sort of a milled flange, whether I just bend out the existing material that I need to cut away anyway into a flange and maybe rivet it, whether I soft solder it, 3D print an interface flange. Um, kind of undecided there, so I think in the meantime I'm going to move on with the uh, gear change. So what do you think of the cool sweatshirt my daughter made? I was really happy to get that. So this is what we're going to need to connect into. That's an M8 stud. And I think I'll just reuse that. Now to get this to work, I think what I'm going to do is just put a clevis on the end of this. I just went through my scrap steel looking for some bit of square stock, but yeah, but this skanky looking offcut seems to be the closest I've got to the size that I want, so I guess I'll just chop that out and see if I can find a nice shiny part somewhere in there, shall I? Pretty much every time I cut stock like this with an uh, angle grinder, I get a comment saying, dude, you need to get a bandsaw. Yeah, I've got a bandsaw. I've got a bandsaw with a broken gearbox. So I'll put a link up here in the top corner to uh, what's wrong with my bandsaw. Now the next operation is going to be cutting the slot into the end of this. Well that looks pretty good. Well, with the milling now finished I can cut it off and start doing the turning. This is the spindle lock and the back gear. So with the spindle lock in the back here engaged, I can now unscrew the, th the chuck For the square stock I'll need the four jaw
I quickly whipped up a clevis pin off camera. That was just a very quick turning job. So that's now finished. Next I need to make the push rod. I've got this 10 millimeter precision shaft that was left over from the 3D printer build. So I think I'll just turn and thread the end of that. It's hardened, but with carbide I can get underneath the, uh, the hardened surface. It's only case hardened. The core is quite soft, so once I get below there I'll be able to run a die down it for a thread. You know, I figured if I'm going to be using extremely precise shafting, I may as well use collets. Nose protector, thread protector. complained about this uh, tailstock die holder which I made in one of my earlier videos and as you can see I haven't still done nothing about it. Next up I need to make a hole for the gear change mechanism and a bushing to guide it. To make the guide bushing I'll use some plastic. My source of engineering plastic is uh, IKEA. These are just chopping boards. Well that drilled with a nice well guided sliding fit.
just pick up those existing holes. Now I've been thinking about how I'm going to fasten this or how I'm going to do the seam firstly. I was first thinking of drilling it and riving it or screwing it but really it's only a, a chip chute and there's no load on it so maybe I'll just soft solder it. I've got the solder paste which is left over from a like a heating copper pipe job. So I think I'll just stuff that down in the seam. I've already degreased it. As far as I can tell this stuff's just powdered solder held in a suspension of flux. Now when I clamp it, I don't want the clamps acting like heat sinks, so I'll just put a piece of wood under the clamp. It'll char a bit, but it doesn't matter. That seems to have done quite a nice job actually. I'll just get all the soot off. I've been a bit uncertain of which was the best way to connect the funnel to this backing sheet. Whether I make a 3D printed part or a maybe some steel milled part to connect them but in the end that uh, that soft soldering went much better than I expected so I think I'll use that for this part as well I've tapped all of those ears to the best fit possible with a hammer and clamped the funnel to the end piece with a clamp, a little bit of wood again. I used a file to grind off the worst of the solder overflow and now I'm just going to use the die, die, die grinder just to take off this, this lip. I obviously degreased this quite well because it picked up quite a bit of rust just overnight. I'll take that down before I paint it. But first I'm just going to throw a little bit of automotive bog on it to uh, just to pretty up this area a little.
I don't think you're going to be that interested in watching paint dry, so I think I'll end this video here. Once again, thanks very much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again next week.